Hey there, I'm Andy. Thanks for investing a few minutes of your day. Our aim with each week's episode is to give you worthwhile content to equip you to take the next step toward Jesus no matter where you're at. I want to start off by having a little fun. Do you ever go for a walk and, and come up with a crazy idea? Or maybe you're like in the shower and you think of something and you're like, man, I wish I could write that down. Well, these things are called shower thoughts. And I want to share a few fun random shower thoughts that I came across. And, you know, I think for the full effect, though, I think we need to have some running water playing during it. All right, well, here's the first one. Taking a dog named Shark to the beach is a bad idea. Technically, the biggest difference between snowboarding and surfing is just the temperature of the water. When a colleague you hate goes on vacation, it's like a vacation for you, too. You know you're a grown-up when you start seeing business trips, like all-expenses-paid vacations, where you have to work, but you get to eat out a lot. And finally, June is like Friday, July is like Saturday, and August is like Sunday. Okay, so we're in, in the start of a new month, and a new uh, series called Love Is. And in today's episode, I don't want to get so much at the scripture and the, the takeaway as much as the angst behind where we're headed the next several weeks. What do I mean by angst? The, that, it's that sense of burning, sense of, something's not right. It's a conundrum. It's something where you're just trying to wrap your head around the solution to something. That's kind of where I find myself right now. And maybe you do too. You know, because what's going on in our society right now is there's two different illnesses. You know, the first one, it's pretty obvious, COVID-19. We we're seeing um, every day that there's new things about it that we didn't know the day before, but we're finding out that it's very unpredictable. But yet the consequences of COVID-19 are definitely widespread. We are all affected by it in one way or another. There's several sectors, sectors of society that are, are being upended because of, of COVID-19. Uh, but there's this other illness, and I don't really even know what to call it per se, but there's this illness that we see all around us and it's divisiveness. You know, it's like this partisanship or polarization or outrage or just this general sense of pessimism in the air. Or we just don't seem to be able to get along. You know, it's like we, we say, it's like you can cut the tension with a knife, you know, what's going on around us. I think of it when I was a teenager, we drove a Cadillac sedan to Villain. We weren't wealthy people. It was in 1982, mind you, and this was was the late 90s. But my dad always joked about how this is the biggest car in America. And it was a pretty big car, um, don't get me wrong. But for three teenage boys in the back seat, it definitely wasn't big enough. You know, and I sat on one side and my older brother sat always sat in the middle and he always put his legs in my way and I was always like mom seriously like just stop can you get it he's he's putting he's on my side you know that's kind of where we find ourselves right now isn't it I, I'm not quite sure what to call this particular illness that's going on in our society but I do like what Arthur Brooks uses to describe it and I think he kind of gives a good word to describe it here's what he says he says we we're in a culture of contempt I think that's probably a good way to describe it, contempt. And he goes on to say that social scientists define contempt as anger mixed with disgust. And he says these two emotions, anger and disgust, form a toxic combination. It's like mixing ammonia with bleach. Uh, is that kind of where we're at? We're, we're seeing this illness of contempt all around us. And just like COVID, there's consequences with this. We're very divided and, and we're finding ourselves lacking civility in so many sectors of society. People are just flat out rude. And, and we're finding educated adults are throwing ridiculous tantrums and, and people are catching it on video and they're going viral. And it seems like we're, we're in, in our own echo chamber chambers you know i've talked about this before we kind of listen to those who agree with the same opinions as us we watch certain channels that that agree with with what we agree with we look at certain websites um but if you're like me you're kind of wondering what's 
actually true. I mean, I had a classmate from high school share on Facebook just a, a couple weeks ago. She shared this. She, she asked this question, where can one find reliable news with validity? She says, I can barely find a scientific article on coronavirus that doesn't state something political. Anybody else feel that way too? You know, it's just kind of this, this polarization. It's just kind of this contempt going on. And I think for a lot of us, we're so fed up by it. But a lot of us are kind of hoping that somebody else will come up with the cure. And we think of things like, well, if we just clean house in Washington, then this contempt will stop. Or if that far left group would stop throwing a tantrum all the time, or that far right group stop bullying everybody and judging everybody. I mean, I don't know what it is, but but we're, we're looking for the cure in all the wrong places. And I want to let us know as, as Christ followers, remind us that, that Christ has given us the cure to this illness of contempt in our society. What the world needs now, more than ever, is love. You know, I think of the song by Jackie DeShannon, you know, several years ago. She's like, what the world needs now is love, sweet love. It's the only thing that there's just too little of. Okay, I'm not going to sing the rest of it, but she says what the world needs now is love, sweet love. No, not just for some, but for everyone. You know, I think I need to edit out that singing. That was really bad. <laughs> um, but I, we could say it this way. Love is the cure. And I know by me saying that, it's kind of like, it seems all touchy-feely. You know, I think of when I was in elementary school we had a kindergarten graduation and i actually remember some of the songs we sang at that graduation why do i still remember that that was a long time ago um mainly because i was a super shy kid that never wanted to be in front of people which is so funny if you think about how god has a sense of humor and right now i'm in front of a whole bunch of people um on a regular basis but i remember a couple of the songs we sang and the first one was michael jackson's beat it okay this was the mid 80s so you gotta you gotta understand this was super popular and so we would wear these white gloves I remember thinking well, what is going on you know it's the kindergartner thinking this is so weird and we do beat it beat it and we do this thing with our hands or whatever i remember that song but i remember this other song and it was super popular in 1985 it was written and it was like we are the world we are the children we are the ones to make a better place, so let's start living, or something like that. It was not, not exactly a quote. Um, and then I remember this other song that, that we would sing, and it was, I gotta read it. It's like, I'd like to build the world a home and furnish it with love, grow apple trees and honeybees and snow white turtle doves. I'd like to teach the world to sing in perfect harmony. I'd like to hold it in my arms and keep it company. I'd like to see the world for once all standing hand in hand. You know, I kind of think of like on the Grinch Soul Christmas and all the Whoville people standing around that Christmas tree singing their random song or whatever. And I, sometimes I think that's what we think of when we, when we think of love. And I don't want to be talking about that touchy-feely sense of love. But instead, I want us to be thinking um, in different terms. And here's what I want us to, to take away in the next several weeks. I, I don't want us to think about in, in this big sense of the world around us dealing with all this division and contempt and how do we find the cure for this whole world. But I want us to get smaller and think about our small worlds. There's people in our lives that are super difficult to love. Uh, there's a face that might immediately come to your mind. Or people who annoy you, and they might be people that you care about, but it's just very difficult to show them love on a regular basis. I want us to be thinking about those individuals and how can we as Christ followers show love to them. But this idea of love goes beyond emotion. Paul, in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 in the Bible, gives this incredible picture of what love is. And we're going to spend the next several weeks, actually all the way up to Election Day. Um, 
spending time here in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. And Paul starts off by talking about how our attempts to be spiritual, if they don't have love, really just is a whole bunch of noise. Here's what he says. He says in verse 1, he says, If I speak in the tongues of men or of angels, but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy, kind of this idea of preaching even, you know, if I have this gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. What Paul's telling this, this particular group of people, and I think he's telling us, is it's not going to take super spiritual people doing these super spiritual things for God to change this illness of contempt. Uh, but he, what he's saying, you know, he, th he says you can have a great rousing speech by this really great preacher, but if, if it doesn't have love, it's kind of just noise. Or you can do these great service projects and meet the needs of people and be super sacrificial and, and share the picture on Instagram of how great you are. But if you don't have love, it amounts to nothing. What the world needs now is love. Love is the cure. Paul goes on and gives some descriptions of love. And, and each week we're going to spend time looking at each one of these descriptions of what love actually is. Here's what he says, verse 4. He says, love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. What we're going to be discovering is that love is more than an emotion, but love is a choice. And there's this different kind of love that Christ impels us to give. This is a love that's not based on conditions, not based on how nice people are to us and we'll be nice back, but this is a sacrificial, proactive, very active kind of love. This is a verb, not a feeling or a noun. Uh, this is a love that demands our all. This is a kind of love that presses on even when you don't feel like it. So be thinking about these next few weeks. Who in your small world do you need to show love to? And, and, and recognize the fact that you as a follower of Jesus Christ have this cure for the society and this culture around you of contempt. Would you take a moment with me? Because I think we really need to ask God to help us in this because this is a really difficult task ahead of us. Let's pray together. God, we live in a world that's sick with this illness of contempt and division. God, help us not to wait for others to change or other things to bring about this cure to, to bring people back together, Lord. But rather, start showing us who we need to proactively love. Show us how we as your followers can be part of the solution of bringing people together. Jesus, that's what you did. You came to restore and to heal and to show this different kind of love. And so I pray that you would show us to love like you, Jesus, in the next few weeks. It's in your name we pray. Well, I want to give you a heads up. We're going to be diving right into what love is starting next week. And there's going to be some very practical takeaways each week for you to chew on. And also for you to chew on with your pack. Maybe you're wondering, what is a pack? Well, we talked about that last week. And you can actually review uh, the episode on, on YouTube, of July 26th episode. 
as, as we defined how to find our pack. And so I encourage you to revisit that. There's going to be some opportunities to kind of discuss things with your pack. And I would love to hear from you if there's a way that I can pray for you, if there's a way that I can just encourage you. Simply just drop me an email, andy at fayette.church. And I'd love to hear from you. If this video and other episodes have been meaningful to you, would you take a moment and share it? Uh, you can click the button on Facebook or on YouTube and share it with, with friends or maybe pass it on to a specific friend who you think would benefit from that. That would mean so much to us. And my desire and my prayer for you this week is that you would take that next step toward proactively loving those in your life. That next step toward togetherness. And the next step toward Jesus. God bless.